Welcome to MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone. I'm Paul Hobden, and with me today I've got Ryan Joffe from Ryan Joffe Properties. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit more about your business. My business is, uh, I like to call it a boutique uh, brokerage, uh, servicing uh, a select group of, of clients who are regularly transacting. That's, I would say, the, the, the core business, focusing on, on three different uh, service offerings, leasing, sales, and uh, tenders. Um, and we, we, we like to spend a lot of quality time with our clients and focus on, on projects. Whereas I think a lot of uh, bigger firms, so to speak, uh, the term I use is maybe a sausage factory. You know, it's, they need to generate this big volume. There's a big management team. And the beauty of this game is it's, you don't need to be a big business to do big deals. So, I, I mean, there, there'd be no reason why I couldn't have, if, if I knew the right people at the time, sold the waterfront, for example. In fact, the waterfront was sold by a group of two or three people who were uh, private equity people. Um, so that's just an example. And you, so, the, the, in fact, the bigger firms, I think, because they've got such big targets and so on, tend to focus on, they've got this volume that they need to push out and, and certain targets that they can't focus on the better deals and the quality deals, which are, I suppose, they, they're great for your brand to, to have been able to put those la landmark deals behind you. You build great r relationships. But if you're just running around doing every every small deal or any deal you can to hit these targets, you sometimes, you don't get to look around and, and, and pick and pick the better deals. So it's a competitive market that you're in and, and, and the way you distinguish yourselves is? I, I build great bonds with my clients and make sure I'm the person they call first when they want to sell a property or buy a property. That's, I think, the key thing. It's, it's really about building those strong relationships that you're the only person they, they, they actually think can help them. Um, and, it's, and it's about adding value to them. You know, uh, that's, that for me is the, the, the biggest differentiator. Relationships in this game are everything. When someone wants uh, to sell a property, if you hear about it last, you don't have much chance. You know, it, it, it's probably sold, but it doesn't help to hear about it when there's an off on the table ready to try and run around. You need to be the first guy to hear about it. And as a relatively small brand and quite a competitive market, how do you go about building those relationships? What are some of the things that you need to do? I think you need to bring value to the table. I think everyone can find a client and say, um, uh, what do you want? you want tenants or whatever? And they'll say, fine, yes, I want tenants, and they'll send you their vacancy schedule and so on. But when you consummate a deal with them, it takes your relationship to the, to the next level. So you, you have to be running hard, making a lot of calls, and you need to do deals with people. It doesn't help to just be friends with them and, and, and they like you. It, it, you need to be able to cl be closing for them and, and doing deals. It's, that's what guys want. It's, a, it's the same in, in any industry. You, it doesn't help for a cell phone company to have nice adverts and nice handsets, but your calls get cut off all the time. You know, people want results. And I mean, your business needs results. It's a commission-driven business. How do you manage that risk of, of not, not always knowing what's going to be in the bank? I've, I've got a very positive outlook, funny enough. I almost, I don't, I, I never get, I never dwell on, on, on the risk side of things. I always just focus on, on, the, on the deal. And it's, it's almost like, not, not on the cost. It's, well, the costs are growing, we need to make more. So let's just focus on making more and not, and not necessarily worry too, too much about the cost. Because fortunately in this game, it's not, a, it's not like I'm buying a sucker for 10 cents and I'm selling it for 12, I need to increase that margin, I need to buy more stock. You, it's, it is all about the deal. You can, and I also was starting off, I, I chased a few big deals and they came off. So the cash flow kind of things, there was no cash flow issue because I managed, I banked those deals quite quickly. Um, and that made a big difference because then I could, there was no worrying about what's going on. But with, with advertising, you can spend money very quickly. I mean, I ran a campaign for the, the Don Group and um, the client said to me, right, I want to go ahead, but you cover the, you cover the av advertising costs. This was two and a half months into business. Papers wanted money up front, quarter of a million rand. It's, 
had to buy advertising companies were sending invoices on a daily basis, and you had to hit it hard in the first three weeks, and it paid off. And I, I, I understood the risks. So, um, and I know that that what's the worst case going to happen? I could, a fortune that I that I need to wait for the next deal to live a bit better, or whatever the case may be. But if I hadn't taken those risks, it, it really elevated me to to another level because it helped. Doing big deals gets you noticed. And if you get noticed, people who are looking for a service decide to give you a call and try you out. And you have a, a lot of experience in the property market. You've worked in the industry for quite some time. The industry's uh, been through a rocky patch recently, uh, driven by the, the recession. How do you find the industry at the moment? I think people always need to transact. So even in a recession, there are people downsizing, but there are also those people who are taking advantage of the recession. The guys that have had very low gearing on their portfolios, uh, they've, they've owned them for 50 years, and they're in a cash position to go and, st and strike. So um, even though there, there has been problems, I'm seeing it very active. And I think it's about just finding the, backing the right horse. You know, you've got to find that client that wants to transact a lot, that's looking for deals, and you've got to run for, uh, around with them. I think you, in this game, you don't, uh, we, my business is focused on quality deals and not volume deals. So the reality is you only need to do a couple of big deals a year to do well. But you, you, you've got to know that you're backing that right horse because you can spend this, the same amount of time and energy chasing a deal and it can either happen or not happen at the last minute. And we've had those, you know. But uh, that's why you've got to... I typically work on me personally say 50 deals at once because I know five are going to come off. If I deal with 10, I can't, I can't survive on just, on just the ones. So you can't put all your eggs in one basket and you've got to choose the right people that are transacting and I think there's always activity in the market. In looking for these quality deals, you deal with some big listed uh, companies and some big listed yeah. funds. How do you instill a sense of confidence in them being a relatively small brand? I think you've got to be very professional and you've, you, you've got to have uh, good market knowledge. I think that's, that for me was actually one of the differentiators in building my career and then uh, building my own business. One of the areas that I chose to focus on a long time ago was the Cape Town CBD. So I got to know every, everything and, and anything about it from, uh, I literally searched who owns every single property in the CBD and know what they paid for it and if it's vacant, tenanted and so on. So I became an area expert. So then people start coming, if, if, if you, and, and I put boards up everywhere in the area. So people start coming to you as the expert. And the, the listed sector are no different. If, if they've got a building to sell and you can sell it quickly, that's your first foot in the door. And that's, it often starts with one deal getting in there. Because at the end of the day, if they've got a va if especially now, uh, I just came from a broker function that one of the listed funds have. The, bro the, the, the listed sector or any property owner who's got a vacancy needs tenants. They're not earning anything otherwise. Some can afford to not have the income, but uh, most of the funds are judged, uh, they, most of them are listed and they judge on performance. So they, they, they need the brokers to fill their buildings. So there is a good, generally a good relationship and they, the, the, the funds are, are happy to spend time with people who deliver results for them. So I actually think it's a, it's a lot easier than, than it maybe seems. They need to grow. So they want to buy, they want you to bring them deals. If I come back to the, the issue around um, it being a commission-based risk-related uh, business, what advice would you give to someone starting out in the property business that now has to kind of go it alone about managing that risk and managing that cash flow? Well, there are almost two sides of it. I don't think you can necessarily become a property broker with no previous experience. I wouldn't advise anyone to just try and do, write the EAB exam and try and get a Fidelity Fund certificate and, and open their doors as, as X, X and Y brokerage. I think typically everyone who's got into the game started somewhere, maybe it was six months, maybe three months, maybe it was two years. So I think let's, let's assume that they've, that they've been in the game for, for a little bit and they want to take, take that step. I think... Timing is everything uh, because 
if you do it too early, I think you can you you can really struggle and drown because you you maybe don't have enough experience, you don't have a big enough client base, and those are the two things I would I would advise people to do. If if you're in the real estate game and you're currently with a brokerage and you want to go on your own, you, you need to have experience and a good client base that are gonna that are gonna support you. It's far harder in the residential space because you typically have clients that buy one house and that's it. Uh, you have a few guys that buy up lots of flats, but they are they, they are really few and far between. So, whereas in the commercial space, you can have a business with one client if he's a if he's a really, and, a, and it could work. Uh, some people do only service they service one one big fund who, when they want to sell, tells them about the asset first, and they do a few hundred million rand deals. They've got no staff, and they just do one deal every couple of months and they massive deals. So my advice would be is get experience and build, build relationships with your clients before you take that, that leap into starting your own business. Ryan, you come from an entrepreneurial background. You were telling me earlier that you started very young. Tell us a bit more about that. I think when I was at school, I loved, and still do, I love technology. Uh, so um, my father actually had a, a he was selling embroidery machines and every embroidery machine had to be sold with a computer. So in, in that case, he had an account with one of the computer wholesalers. So a few people that I know were talking about getting computers. I said, well, let me sell it. Let me organize your computer. You know, I'll make a small markup. I'll be transparent. You know, this is the cost. I'll charge you 10%. I'll build it for you and, and, and make it happen. And uh, I started s selling computers, and I actually I thought that was what I was going to do after school in terms of com the computer industry. I, I enrolled in a in a degree at Cape Tech to do computer programming for for a few years, and uh, it was shortly after I started the degree that I decided it wasn't for me. But um, I always had a spirit of of if I wanted something, I'd I'd say how can I get it? How can I make some money to get it? Uh, whatever it may have been, if it was to go overseas, organize a job that I could work and, and, and be there at the same time so I could afford to be there, whatever the, the case may be. So I always, I, I love negotiating, I love selling stuff and I love talking to people. Ryan, you spoke earlier about the possibility that you could have sold the, the waterfront had the, the, the dice fall in that way. If there was one property in South Africa that you could sell, what would it be? I think I, I'd, I would like to sell a, a, a very big, uh, a very big mall. Uh, I mean, very often uh, these properties don't sit on the market for long, um, and it's not like so you drive past and there's a big for sale sign and you say one day I'll find a buyer for that. I think it's a, a case of I just want to do, I want to do a very big transaction, like a billion rand transaction. I think that's that's one of, one of my goals. Any uh, particular mall? No, there there are lots in the country. I just, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to I just want to do a, 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 a deal of that size. I'd love to do a deal of that size. Ryan, where to from here for your business? I commute weekly to Joburg um, or to Durban uh, to uh, deal with investment property deals because I spoke about specialisation earlier, and I can't be a specialist anywhere, so I focus on CBD and then investment stuff. So I think I, where to, I would like the business to be a national business, whether it be formalising an alliance with brokerages in, in other regions, or opening my own business in those regions, I haven't decided yet. The, the important thing that I'm, that, I focus, that I'm very conscious of is not to dilute, spread myself too thin and dilute my offering. So um, we have only been going for, for about se seven months. We're a team now of uh, nine people. We've concluded over 250 million rands of the sales in that period and over 10,000 squares of leasing. I'm uh, helping the team get better down and, and to a steady flow of, of, of deals at the, at the moment. That's one of my big focuses. And then we'll, I, I, I will look to, to grow the business, but not, not bigger th than, than I can't manage the whole thing. Because I've seen it in other businesses. When you start bringing in, get to a certain size, you maybe need to bring in management. And then you, you lose your connection with your team. So I just want to, I want to be big enough to been, I suppose, be noticed out there. There's a certain, uh, 
what's economies of scale where you can place big ads in the paper and have boards everywhere and, and kind of make yourself known. That for me is the is the tipping point because as I said before, you're not limited to the size of your deal that you can do with the size of your business. So I'd rather have a small team that's doing lots of big deals. Ryan, that brings us to our round of quick fire questions. What's the best advice you've received? The best advice is to do something that you love and you'll never work another day in your life. And your best moment as an entrepreneur? Closing a, closing a very big deal that the market talks about. Because I think the business is built on, as I said, one deal at a time. And if people are noticing that you're doing stuff, they start calling you to help them with their deals. And your biggest mistake? Not protecting myself in a deal, taking it for granted that, uh, that everything would work out. Be careful. Dot your I's and cross your T's. What quality do you look for in people that you work with? Loyalty, uh, honesty, and, the, and someone who shares the same passion for, for real estate and doing deals that I do. And what do you think an entrepreneur needs to, to be successful? They need to have the drive. They need, they need to have the, the never giving up attitude. Because I think if you, if you persevere long enough and you've, and you've got the, the tools, the, the, then you'll make it happen. And what inspires you as a small business owner? I, I want to be successful um, and, and make a lot of money and, and, and build a brand. So it's, it's a number of things. What would you do differently? Right now, nothing. Um, I'm happy with the way things are turning out. Um, and I'm going to continue on the, on the same path. What makes South Africa a good place to be an entrepreneur? I think with, with all the uncertainty, it creates opportunity. And I think it's a, a smaller market that you can make a difference in, other than big cities like New York and London. What keeps you awake at, at night? The excitement of, of closing a deal or getting a new deal in or, or along those lines. I very seldom uh, get caught up in stress and so on. I, I handle it very well and I think that's helped me quite a lot. And what gets you going in the morning? The, the excitement of, of doing something big that day, closing a big deal maybe. Ryan, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you for joining us. We look forward to the coming weeks where we will bring you further South African entrepreneurs. I'm Paul Hobden. Thank you and goodbye.